If you've been feeling unlike yourself recently, you're having a hard time getting up out of bed, you're not eating the right foods, you're not exercising, you don't really have like the same like drive for life anymore, then I can definitely help you out. So in the past year, I've been extremely motivated and driven. Like every single day, I've been running marathons this year, I've been eating extremely well, I've been making more money than I ever thought was possible in my life, and I'm just doing things like traveling and just ultimately just controlling the life that I wanna be living, and it wasn't always this way. Just two years ago, I was so fucking lost. I had no drive or direction with what I wanted to do in my life. So just to give you some context for, I don't know if like this is the first time you're watching a video or you've seen some of my stuff before, you may or may not know, I was running an agency at the time. It was doing like forty to $50,000 in a month, but gross revenue is very different than net profit. So I was making maybe like six, $7,000 in a month, but I was working like 12 hours a day doing all this BS stuff I didn't really want to do and like I really thought to myself like is if this is all life is then this is not it because this sucks and so I was looking for some kind of way to change out of it so what changed between then and now well if you've ever started something new like a new business or a new job or like a new relationship it's very motivating and it's like exciting and it doesn't really feel like there's a lot of tension. And so what I've noticed between hundreds of students who are able to not only uh, get to a place of like high motivation, but stay in that consistently for like years is four commonalities. And, and like I said, these four things just kind of come naturally to you when you're starting anything new. But if you've been doing anything for a long time and you're kind of feeling that lack of like motivation and drive, then these four things are gonna be a really great reminder for you. And just to be candid, I did get a lot of these from Cole Gordon. That guy uh, has a lot of good training on energy management. So I just wanna give credit where credit is due. So let's get into this right now. So the four areas of energy management. Number one is your physiology. How are you physically showing up every day? Are you eating good foods? Are you sleeping well? That kind of thing. Number two is clarity on your goals and your vision. Do you have an idea of where you're trying to go or are you just lacking? Uh, necessity is the reasons you do what you do. What happens if you do it? What happens if you don't do it? And then finally, inspiration. What are the daily pieces of information that you're intaking into yourself? Is it positive or is it negative? Let's break these down one by one. First up, we got physiology. This is everything from your exercise to your diet, to your sleep, to your water intake, to your meditation. If you homeboys out there know when your girlfriend has a headache, it's cause she ain't drinking water. Okay, it's the same thing on a lot of different areas of motivation, energy management, when you're not feeling great, it usually stems from one of those five areas. The other three areas of energy management, like clarity, necessity, inspiration, is kind of gonna take you up against the edge. But if you're not doing the basic stuff of your physiology, man, like start there first. A quote here I got from Cole was, a sedentary, dehydrated, sleep-deprived salesperson who has been running on junk food for a week is not gonna perform at his highest capability, even if he has a world-class mindset. Guys, this is the number one way to produce energy. And I, I know it sounds simple, but everything changed for me when I just started managing my, my sleep schedule better. When I started going to sleep at the same time and waking up at the same time, I changed this one thing and then my friends, family were like, yo, like, what are you doing differently? And they were asking me. I've had past partners who, like I couldn't even have them over because their sleep schedule was just all over the place and surprise, surprise, their energy was all over the place. So just last week, I was waking up 5.30 a.m. every day, going to sleep at 9 p.m. every night. That's been great, but uh, my natural circadian rhythm actually wants me to go to sleep at like 11.30, wake up around 7.45. I have an aura ring, so if you know, you know. So I'm gonna be testing that going forward. Next up is clarity. So how aligned are you with your vision? And does that vision give you energy? Tony Robbins has this quote that says, life supports that which supports life. When you're entirely aligned with your vision, you get energy. So when you're picking your vision for the future, keep in mind two things, because you actually have two risks with, with molding this vision. Number one is that you're choosing a vision that's too big that you don't know how to get there, so it just seems impossible and you just stop taking actions altogether. So, I mean, you wanna have an idea of what that looks like for the future, but in very manageable chunks for how you're gonna be getting there. So maybe your goal is to have $5 million. Like, I don't know how to do that. So then break it down. I just wanna make $100,000 this year. 
and then you break that down even more. And then the second risk is having a vision for the future that is smaller than where you're at right now. It doesn't feel very motivating if you're feeling as though the more you move forward, the less significant your life is gonna get. Ideally, you wanna be in this space where you're in the performance high, which is like, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but it's going to be a stretch to get there. So I'd be in places in my life where I'd be setting like sales goals and projections in my my business. And uh, last month I would have a record month. And then this month I would set that same goal, but like just above. And I'd be like, oh, like that's going to be a stretch. But like if I really work hard, I can get it. And then you're challenging yourself to reach that vision. And it just like feels good. So that's again, that's called the performance high the ideal spot you want to be in. And then we've got necessity. So these are the things and like the reasons for why you do what you do. So whenever you hear people ask like, what's your why? It it fits into your necessity here. And so your reasons give you energy. And so you can have like two types of reasons. You can have selfish reasons and you can have unselfish reasons. Selfish reasons might be like, yeah, if I'm like doing remote sales and I'm, yeah, I'm making a cool income, I can get a cool car, I can get a cool house, I can travel remotely and work wherever I want. Like that's the lifestyle that I want selfishly. Unselfishly, I can help people to get to where they want in their life. I can help them grow their skill set. I can help them take like the first chapter, the first step they need in a series of steps to create a business and become millionaires. Like that's motivating to me too. And then just another exercise I do within necessity is I just paint like the most gruesome, horrific picture of the future, what that looks like for me if I don't change what I'm doing now. And that's just going to be whatever works for you. For me personally, after just researching more about the Great Reset, the World Economic Forum, plans for the world after 2030, uh, I just got motivated to change my life before 2030. If you don't know what I'm talking about, comment below or send me a message on Instagram and we can have a conversation about it. Okay, next up we've got inspiration. I mean, this one's probably the most like trite one of all of them. You hear this all the time. Like, do you feel inspired by the work that you do? And it's kind of a a different meaning here. I mean, inspiration is a direct correlation to energy. It's the reason why guys listen to like motivational music when they're at the gym. You know, like... Like you feel good, you feel energized, you feel like you're in a part of this story or this journey that's leading to some kind of significant end. So when we talk about inspiration here, we're we're directly talking about the specific number of things that you are taking into your body. Not like food and water, but more like pieces of information. Like just like the simplest example of this is like, are you reading positive client reviews or negative client reviews? If you're reading the negative client reviews, you're not gonna feel very inspired to sell more of what you're doing. But if you're reading positive client reviews, you're like inspired and hyped, you feel like you're helping people and you wanna continue to move that energy forward and help more people in the same way. Okay, now let's talk about the daily regulation of energy. So if you want to be a highly motivated person, you've got to be on par with all four of these things every single day. So how do we do that? Each night, rate yourself on a scale of 1 to 10 on your energy. 8 plus being you're on point and you're in alignment. 7 or below being you're at risk or you're not on point. Here you want to be just... (laughs) ruthlessly honest with yourself. I think the biggest risks in this and and not identifying when you're in a rut or in a bad spot is your ego gets in the way and you're like, no, actually, like I did do an okay job with my physiology today. But the one person you shouldn't lie to is yourself. So if you're ever in doubt of what to give yourself, just rate yourself lower. And then some other questions to ask yourself when determining your number on each of these is, am I getting to sleep and waking up on time? Or am I getting 7.5 hours of sleep? Am I following a healthy diet? Am I drinking water? Am I exercising and moving daily, especially prior to my calls or anything important during the day? Am I meditating daily, again, prior to your calls? Did I review my vision today and write out my goals? Is my vision inspiring? Do I have an idea of how to close the gap? Or is this some kind of Grant Cardone 10x nation, just 10x what you're doing? Like, guys, it's not going to be realistic. Now, when you go on a necessity, you can ask, can I easily think of the reason why, selfishly and unselfishly, this is so important to me? do they give me energy and just be honest with yourself like do they give you energy or not for inspiration you can ask are you doing your daily gratitude how many wins am i listening to weekly when's the last time i listened or looked through testimonials 
What am I listening to in the morning? Is there anything in my environment like family, friends, relationships that's affecting my state negatively and therefore affecting my influence? So this last one, I'll give you a really, really good example with. Uh, one of my partners that I was with, I just did a classic stupid thing where I uh, got my, my girlfriend at the time like really, really upset. But uh, just the negativity in the air and the feelings that I was kind of like in this guilt and shame kind of state of mind, just that one thing like it, it affected my work, it affected my closing rate and my energy just dropped significantly just because of these one, this, this one area of energy management, which was the, the inspiration. You know, the, the information I was taking from her was, was negative. So uh, what was funny was after a few days, I realized like all this energy suckage was coming from her. So I addressed it with her. Like I didn't say like, hey, you're sucking my energy. No, like I went and I solved that issue and I, I addressed what I did and I apologized and I mended that with her. And when I mended that with her, my energy surrounding everything else just came together and I was like back on it. Okay, now let's talk about how to break out of a red. So if you're in a position where you're really, really down in the low and you know that for sure and you just wanna break out of it and get into a new mental space, well, this is the part of video that you wanna watch like 50 times. So the way you get out of a rut is by doing high performance rituals. Let's go back to my boy, Tony Robbins. He says, show me your rituals and I'll show you your standards. Show me your standards and I will know your results. Every day, whether you know it or not, you have a baseline set of actions that you fall to. Now for me, like I work out every day, I eat healthy every day, I'm running every single day. If I'm not, I don't know, like eating an apple and banana every day type thing, like I feel like a little off. Whereas if someone else was eating an apple or a banana that day, they'd feel like a win for them, right? So my standards of success are like up here. And if my standards are up here, my results are gonna be matching that. If your standards are down here, your results are gonna be matching that. So let's evaluate some of your rituals. What are your morning and nighttime rituals? So I'm gonna give you some examples of what I do in the morning, what I do in night, just so you can see, just like an example of what like a beast looks like. <laughs> Okay, these are just what I do, okay? It's just what I do. I am not God or anything, but I'm just, it's worked for me. It's worked for my energy management. Maybe it'll work for you. So first thing I do in the morning is usually I read, and this is helping me on the inspiration side of things because I'm reading things that revolve around what I have to do that day. So if I have a lot of sales calls that day, I will read sales books. If I have to do a lot of marketing, like videos like I'm doing right now, I'll read marketing books in the morning so I know how to better communicate with an audience and it makes me feel more motivated. Uh, I will read my identity document, which is like this little 10 page document that's very personal to me. It just kind of shows uh, the kind of man I wanna be and the vision I have for my life. and that single document helps me with my inspiration. It helps me with my clarity for my goals. And it also helps me with my necessity for why I'm doing what I'm doing. After that, I will usually just go into some, some exercise. I will work out. That's of course some physiology. And it's also inspiration because as I'm working out now, I'm no longer listening to music. I'm listening to things like um, calls that I took that were really well. So it's making me feel good. Or I'm just listening to like training videos or like audio books like stuff that again just makes me feel good after that i do some breath work i do some meditation which of course is physiology you're kind of getting yourself into like a calm easy headspace for the day you know you always want to be making decisions calmly you want to always be the coolest cucumber in the room when anything's happening you know if you're trying to get to six figures or a million dollars you don't want to be getting there by leaving just a wreckage and a, and a path of destruction behind you because you're so like aggressive and heavy headed, you wanna just be like calm. You wanna be the guy that gets there in a way that people don't even realize that it's happening. So meditation and breath work really helps that. And then depending on the day, what I'll also do is I'll write out some gratitude and intentions for the day. And that just helps again with inspiration, clarity, necessity. That's some days I do it, some days I don't. And then when we shift to the nighttime, what I like to do is I plan tomorrow today. That's a huge game changer. That should just be a standard thing for every single person, I think. Uh, when I started doing that, that allowed me to set up alignment with what I say I was going to do and then what I actually did, which built up my internal confidence when I was like, okay, I'm going to do this at 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m. kind of thing. And then I actually did that. I'm like, whoa, my words hold weight. 
I also do an end of day journal, which is what we just talked about. I rate myself out of 10 on each of those areas of necessity. And that just helps me again reflect on the day. Then I just do some routines that help with my, my sleep. So I will brew some tea. I will light some incense. All my lights in my place will go red. And then again, I will read at the end of the day, just intaking more inspiration. The stuff I read at the end of the day is actually different than the stuff I read in the morning, because at the end of the day, you can kind of read more like long-term vision stuff. Whereas at the start of the day, you want to read more like stuff that's directly going to apply to your day. At one point in my life, when I was, um, I was selling videos to realtors and when I was reading about sales every morning, my sales percentage just went up and I was closing like crazy. But then at one point I switched from reading sales and I started reading like, I can't even remember what it was, but I just got into, uh, I got really interested in something at the time that was like just completely random and it just like dropped my closing percentage because now I wasn't focused on, on that. So if you've got like the more long-term reading material that you're thinking of for the future, five, 10 years down the line, I actually think it was a book on farming. It was a book on farming and like, uh, landscaping and like, uh, uh, stuff, something like that, like growing vegetables. It was really weird. Um, but yeah, that affected my clothes rate. And so I save those books for the evening so that I can like sleep about it and I can think about it in my dreams and kind of wake up with those thoughts connected in the morning. Now, finally, we need to talk about how you can reset yourself back to your baseline. So again, if you're just feeling low, you're not here, you're feeling here. How do we get yourself back to here? Well, let's talk about it. Step one is identifying the source of the rut. So which of these four areas are you really, really lacking in? Your biggest risk of falling into a rut, like I said earlier, is not knowing that you're in a rut. This is usually due to ego because you don't want to admit it. So if you're doing like the end of day journal and you're able to diagnose by writing out like which of those four areas you're really struggling in, you'll be able to just very quickly identify like what's lacking and what needs to change. Step two is you actually want to find your baseline. Okay. And the way, this is, this is great. <laughs> this is really, really, I love this tactic. At what point in your life did you feel like you were thriving and you were doing well, right? And you can go back into your end of day journals when you were at baseline and you can see what you were doing in each of those areas to feel that way. And then you can just identify like what was different. So when I look back at my end of day journals from when I was selling before and I was reading books on like gardening for whatever reason, um, that's what I noticed. And I said like, oh, like I, I stopped reading sales material and I started reading and intaking information that had nothing to do with what I was doing throughout the day. So when I made that switch and I started reading more about like sales content, like, yeah, my sales closing percentage went up. And then step three is just implementing it and getting back to baseline. So I kind of jumped the gun a bit earlier, but basically what you're doing here is just identifying what's different, right? And then you're just making those changes in this step. You are changing it. And more importantly, like you you have to forgive yourself because it's very easy as like high performing entrepreneurs to feel like you're not enough, which is really fucking sad. But uh, if you're not at baseline and you don't feel good about yourself, first off, like forgive yourself, then change. Then once you've changed, just document the lessons of what you learned from the change so that when you can come back there in the future, you can just notice the differences. So yeah, that is uh, my perspective on energy management, the four things you can do. Guys, if this video was helpful, leave me a comment down below. It really helps me get the fucking algorithm all sauced up and juicy. And if you really, really liked it, send me a message on Instagram, letting me know your thoughts. And I'd love to have a conversation with you guys to see what else you'd like to watch. So thanks for watching guys. I will catch you later. Cheers.